symbolization. That's the name of the game. So these colors that came in are really just the default colors that were given, um, given to us. And just to refresh, this is the map canvas. These are our layers, right? Um, right now we've got three layers, and even though it says boundary, um, the Vermont boundaries are above the New Hampshire ones, they are geographically next to each other. So it, we don't, they don't overlap at all anyway. But if they did overlap, then Vermont would appear on top. So what I'd like to do is change the symbol because this doesn't mean that much to me. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I, you can either double click either of these layers. So I'll do Vermont first. I'm gonna double click it. And I get a window that pops up and these are the layer properties. So everything we do in this box relates to this file right here. And I'm gonna just change the layer name I'm going to call it um, Vermont. I'm going to call it Vermont Towns. And I'll hit apply and it changes it over here. I don't know if you saw that. Um, one thing I'll point out, I changed the name, but if I go back to my browser, you'll see that the file doesn't change, right? So the way I like to think about this is that we're kind of playing with like a, it's a playlist really. It's like iTunes. If you make a playlist in iTunes that you want to listen to, um, you can add as many songs as many different times as you want. Um, and you can even delete them, but you're not changing the file on the computer. If you do, if I was to remove this Vermont Towns, I would not actually lose this off of my computer, just out of my map canvas. So, I'm going to rename this one as well, and I'm calling this one New Hampshire Towns. Say OK, or apply. And what you'll see is the layer source, right? This The actual file is still called PBP, right? This right here is called a UNC. It's an address on my computer that describes um, to the program where the actual file is that I'm calling New Hampshire towns in my layers. So great, now they make more sense to me, kind of looks a little better in my brain. <laughs> um, so now I'm gonna change the symbol of each of these and I want them both to be, uh, I'm gonna, let's just go play around. I'm gonna open up Vermont towns and instead of this general category, I'm gonna go to style and it's still gonna stay a, a single symbol but what I'm thinking is that maybe we ought to click this simple fill here, which is, um, this is how it's symbolized. And I'm gonna change the border to be white. And I know that seems a little weird, but it's gonna look nicer. I'll make the border white. And I'm gonna make the fill a soft red. So maybe we'll make it red, like, uh, like that. I have to play around. It's a funny um, color scheme here, but this is, uh, you have to get used to it. Uh, we can go into color another time, but this is hue, saturation, and value, the red, green, blue, and computer screens work with the th three primary colors, are red, green, and blue, as opposed to um, with printers, where in cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And now I'm going to hit apply. And now you can see Vermont has changed to a solid fill with a thin white border. What I'm actually going to do, because I want to, I want to see the town, but what I really want to see is I want to see underneath, I want to combine this outline with um, the aerial image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this layer transparency to 50% and see what that does. So now I hit apply and that's okay. Maybe I'll make it even more, I think it like 75%. And now we can zoom in, let's zoom into a particular region, like right on the border here. Okay, so here 
I think this is interesting because we can see a little bit of the landscape underneath. I still don't like it very much, but let's we'll have to play around. Um, and you can decide what you like, but this is the Connecticut River Valley. This is the Connecticut River runs down through here. And I think I might opt for making the fill of these polygons empty. So make them have no color at all and be transparent and then make the borders black so that um, we can see the full color of the aerial image. And you'll find that cartography really is, there's a lot of kind of design to it. Um, like I mentioned in the other video, it's a lot of fun. You just have to kind of figure out what works. So I'll go back into the Vermont towns and my simple fill here. I'm gonna change this to, um, I think the way I have to do is I have to click fill. And then the strange thing about QJS is that it calls, um, in, in this world, transparency on the web is called alpha. And so if I make the alpha zero, alpha zero, okay. And the fill this pattern tells me that it's gonna be transparent. And I'm actually gonna turn this back to zero. And now let's just see what that does. Yeah, you see how that works? So I changed the fill to transparent by making the alpha zero and then ramped up the layer um, back to full uh, opacity. And then I, I might even turn this, the solid line, the border is white and you know, that's okay for now. I'm gonna leave it white. So what I'd like to do is I'm gonna do the same for New Hampshire. I'm gonna make New Hampshire white and hollow. So um, let's see, uh, I'll do, we'll do it together. So double click New Hampshire, style, simple fill right here, right? I'm gonna go to the fill setting, make the alpha zero, okay? Make the border white. Okay, okay, cool. So now we have uh, just a very simple map of townships along the Connecticut River Valley um, with an aerial image underneath and it's white. The next thing I'd like to add is labels. I wanna see these towns, right? So to add labels, I'm gonna double click again. And the way I have to do this is I go to labels. I can check this box here and I'm gonna label it with, I think it's called just town name, right? Town name. And let's just hit apply and see what happens. Apply. And you can see that they all go in there automatically. I'm not crazy about it um, because it's all caps, but I you don't have much of a choice in this case. That's actually not bad um, for area features to make them all capitals. I'm gonna make the size a little smaller, maybe six point, um, like that, apply. That's a little better. Um, and you can play around here with some of the, uh, the styles. There are a few different styles you can do. Um, I'm gonna make the color um, also maybe white. Okay, and let's see what that does, apply. No, it's starting to starting to turn into a little something. And um, you can do any number of things. You can go and make them slightly transparent, just like we can with everything else, so that they sit back a little bit more to the image. Apply. See how they get softened like that. It's gonna be kind of nice. Um, so I might do that, and then I think I'm going to um, do that to the other one as well. So let's do New Hampshire labels. And this one, let's just go with name. I think that's the right one. Hit apply, see if it works. Yep. There we go. And then I'm going to make this six as well. Apply. Now, I'm going to take a pause. Uh, this is interesting. And you might be wondering, why didn't I get all of this data pre-prepped for you? And you know, I'm kind of going in a meandering course. And what you should know is that cartography is like this. Um, you interact with the data, you encounter problems, you solve it, 
and I think that seeing me do that is probably going to be helpful in the long run. So the thing I just noticed here, let's turn this white finally, um, just like the other side, apply. Um, you'll see down here that all of these names are all caps. So you might be asking, well, why is one all caps and why is one normal, the initial capital and then the rest are lowercase? Well, that's because these are stored in an actual file. Um, part of the shape file is called a DBF, and that is just a spreadsheet that records the name of each town. So to view all of these names in each file, it's called the attribute table. So to open the attribute table, and we're going to compare each file and see um, if, we, if, there, if we can't make them agree, um, we have to right-click the layer that we care about. Let's check out New Hampshire first. And instead of going to properties like we've been doing, we're going to go to open attribute table. So we open up that, and here we go. Voila, we've got a table full of attributes, and each one of these rows is actually a town. So let's sort like this and just click make a selection here. Yep, and you can see they pop up in yellow. Uh, whatever you highlight on the left here highlights a town on, um, in the map canvas. So it looks like all of these names are recorded as we see them, right? Which makes me think that, well, all of the names in the Vermont file are recorded in all caps. So uh, I need to clear the selection. I'm just going to hit this button up here. It says unselect all. And I'm going to close this because it doesn't look like there are any other options. This is the only way we can even label New Hampshire. So I'm going to go into Vermont and right click. And instead of going to properties like we've been doing, I'm going to go to open attribute table. Aha! Look at this. We've got all of these fields, right? And it's the same idea. But what I want to point out is that we use town name, but if we use town name MC, uh, that's going to give us uh, the same style as the other one. So instead of going through the entire New Hampshire file and typing in all caps um, or altering, adding another field that's all caps, if we just use town name MC on the Vermont side, it'll match the style of New Hampshire. So let's do that. Go ahead. So what we're going to do is open Vermont Towns, Properties, and the Labels, right? And this time, instead of Town Name, we just switch it to Town Name MC. And I'm going to look down here and hit Apply. And voila, it changes the style. And everything else is the same. The font, I think, is the same. The size is the same. So there we go. We've got town boundaries in white borders and labels in white um, and a white font that's slightly transparent. Okay, see you in the next video.